Hey, Kyle. Thanks for agreeing to talk to me. No problem, Louie. So, Kyle, I want to ask you a couple of questions, but I want to start with you just telling me a little bit about yourself, um, like your name, where you went to school, uh, um, what, where you went to college, um, and what you studied, and what you're, what you're doing now. Okay. Uh, Kyle Tresh. I grew up in St. Minor, Indiana, which is a pretty small town. I went to a smaller high school, and then uh, eventually went to Purdue for a mechanical engineering. And when did you finish at Purdue? Uh, 2015. So five years ago now. Yeah. Wow. It was fast, isn't it? When you wanted to count like that. <laughs> yes. So when was the last time you took a uh, chemistry course, Kyle? I took chemistry the last time uh, senior year of high school. Okay. 2011. So did you, uh, was that an AP chemistry class at that point or? It was labeled as an AP chemistry class, but it, the, uh, it probably wasn't. Right. We, it wasn't a great chemistry class. We didn't have a very good chemistry program. Um, so definitely didn't learn too much in the And uh, so did you, so you didn't have to take any, any chemistry classes like a, 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 as part of your engineering degree or anything like that? So you could either take uh, chemistry or you could take uh, computer science, right? I think for computer science, they didn't have any background in chemistry, so. So what is it that you do now? I am now an application engineer for a power solutions company. Um, so I work on um, products that we install engines in rail applications, marine applications. Um, I work a lot with the customers and basically they come to me with um, something they want to put an engine in and I help them uh, put an engine in, install it and test it. Um, I used to work as a product engineer uh, for mainly in manufacturing so i would work uh, problem solving projects for like warranty returns and that kind of thing and uh so that's working with customers are any of those customers do they have any sort of a, a scientific background or at all that you have to work with yeah, yeah so i i work with mainly engineers um i work with some business um, and management people um but a lot of it's like uh so we have our plants as well. So we've got a support function for um, our team. So for example, if we work with any kind of fluid analysis, oil analysis, we'll work with chemists um, that work uh, at our technical facility. So um, I do work with a pretty large gamut of people. Yeah. How do you know they're chemists? That's what their signature in their email says. Um, but there are also some that have a PhD. So usually the, the heads of the lab or something like that will use a PhD um, at, at least at our company. Right, right. So what, uh, what things do you remember from the, the last time you took a chemistry class? Honestly, not a lot. Um, well, tell, me what, tell me what those things are. I've, I've been in the periodic table. Okay. Uh, I could probably balance a simple reaction or a simple equation. I, I not 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 much right um yeah we didn't we didn't have a great grasp of the chemistry department when right. i was there right. right so what kinds of uh general advice would you have for people who are studying chemistry or anything for the first time i would say um because i know one example it's not chemistry related but i took physics in college which i didn't take in high school and it was a it was a steep learning curve, um, and I I honestly did not do well at the beginning. But I mean, you pick it up little by little, because um, sometimes when you get to college, um, if other kids had a um, had a better opportunity in high school to learn chemistry or physics, in my case, um, they'd obviously be better at it. Um, you just gotta spend your time. I, I used to spend a lot of time in the help rooms for physics when I was. Um, in college and just getting help from our TAs and um, just using my resources really. Right. So don't don't feel like you have to do it on your own. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. One of the one of the things that I I learned um, and it wasn't I didn't learn until I went to Purdue myself because I uh, I had been at a small undergraduate institution, um, but when I was at Purdue. I finally figured out that 
big university like Purdue, like U of I, like ISU, if you can figure out that you're falling through the cracks or you're not getting something, we have unbelievable resources to throw your way. Exactly. Um, right. And if, if you've got a learning disability, we've got specialists that can help you with that. If you've got a, if you're just struggling because your math background is a little weaker or you've never really had to study and so you don't really know any, any ways to study the way that perhaps you should and you find yourself, if you can figure out that you're falling through the cracks, large universities have unbelievable resources to throw at you. Right. right. And then, I mean, even to add to that, we had help rooms at Purdue. And so that's basically you have a TA that has office hours and you just kind of sit there. I always just went to help rooms to do my homework. Yeah. And I met some of my best friends in there. So, I mean, you could, one, learn a lot, but then also make some great connections as well. Yeah. Yeah, those are, uh, those are, those are important things. I mean, I mean, you just got to find what works for you, right? I mean, like what helped me was going to the help rooms, but like what I might help someone else is studying alone. I mean, it's just whatever suits you. Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. Thanks, Kyle, very much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Talk to you again soon.